there's a lot of ways I think God shows us that he loves us, uh, that he cares for us, that we can be inspired and see God. But have you ever stopped to think that God shows his love for us through vegetables? We'll talk about that and a lot more in today's lesson. Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Richmond, and this is the Dwelling Richly Bible Study, where we love God, heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are women who enthusiastically and intentionally dwell in the Word and let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. You can find Bible studies and video teaching like this on my blog and the Dwelling Richly podcast. Subscribe to this channel, hit that little church bell so you can get notified whenever I drop a new video. Let's get into the Word. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into God's Word today. I'm looking forward to this. this is lesson two, and we're on day five. Today we're reading through Genesis chapter one, verses nine through 13. And like I mentioned at the intro, what about vegetation and vegetables? And could that possibly show that God loves us? We're gonna take a look at that, and uh, we'll get into God's Word. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take a peek at our study ahead of us. Like I said, it's lesson two, day five. And uh, we wanna open with prayer, focus on our memory verse, and dive into our reading today. Our focus today will be God assigns purpose. God assigns purpose. All right, let's go ahead and pray and get into God's word. Heavenly Father, we ask your hand of blessing on everything that we do right now in your word. Thank you for your great love for us. Thank you for the power of your word and how it changes our heart and our mind and uh, give us the joy and enthusiasm we long for as we live our life for you and as we get into our study right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our memory verse, and I, hopefully you're doing better on it. I mean, you know, it's a song now, and it's a little easier if you've been with us through the Dwelling Richly Studies. Every now and then, we'll, I'll, I'll mention a song, but this is the first time I think I've ever actually written a song for our memory verse in this study. So I'm happy and excited, and it's, I'm getting great feedback. You guys are enjoying it. Sing it with me now, and let's practice our verse together from Psalm 104, verses 33 through 34, out of the New International Version. Here we go. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord simple, right? How are you guys doing on that? Do you have the wallpaper on your phone yet? Uh, it's right there. You can just download it on my blog page where you find all of these Bible studies. I hope you take the time to do that. And it's a great easy way to keep God's word right there in front of you. And maybe even a way to talk about your Bible study with people who might see it and ask, hey, what's that wallpaper? All right, uh, let's go ahead over into our study again. And we are doing our reading from Genesis 1, 9 through 13. Grab your Bible. I'll read out loud uh, from the new uh, English translation as usual. And like I've shown you before on this, you can also read it from you know any translation you want. But if there's a special uh, wording, you might want to go to the new English translation because it'll fit best in the description on your page right there. Here we go. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. It was so. God called the dry ground land and then gathered the waters and, and the gathered waters. He called, that's kind of, kind of a tongue twister. And the gad, <laughs> now that I've slowed it down, it's even worse. <laughs> Let's try that again. And the gathered waters, ta-da, he called seas. <laughs> Might as well said he, she sells seashells by the seashore. I can do that one just fine. Oh, well. Uh, he called seas. God saw that it was good. God said, let the land produce vegetation, plants yielding seeds and trees on the land, bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. It was so. The land produced vegetation, plants yielding seeds according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. Uh, God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning a third day. All right, there, there's our focus on our lesson here. And our, our scripture focus. We'll go into a couple other passages today, and we have been, and we will continue to go through Psalm 104 and make the connections of Psalm 104 back to the, our passage in creation, uh, Genesis chapter 1 as well. So uh, we also have some repeats, and each day we kind of get into that rhythm, 1, 2, and 3, and here we go with that. Number one, what you doing today, God? Um, Note God's actions from this passage. So back over here to the beginning of Genesis, uh, God said, so there's an action. 
and we've been making note of those by double underlining them and you can highlight them in blue you can highlight them in red um, just do it in a way that makes sense and, and helps you along the way as well he, God said let the water um, be gathered in the one place the dry ground appear it was so God called I'm gonna hit that one in blue this time try to switch it to blue on this one but it wouldn't you know, we'll go back I don't know why um, and he gathered and the dry uh, the, and the gathered waters he called sea so we called and called and uh, God said and here we go said again uh, let the land produce vegetation and it was so the land produced vegetation plants yielding seeds according to their kinds trees bearing fruit seed according to their kinds God saw it was good there was evening and there was morning the third day God's actions from this passage um, he called twice said twice and saw once good job all right so what's new well besides all of creation uh make note of new words and phrases that are familiar from previous and we have some repeats today um god said saw called god saw that it was good um and there was evening and there was morning a third day no new no new things coming up in terms of like repeating phrases obviously we have a new day of creation but in terms of the pattern nothing particularly new here uh, number three review and connect which verses from psalm 104 connect to this day of creation kind of overlapping a bit where we left off but let's go ahead and read verses 7 through um i highlighted there 7 through 16. your shout made the waters retreat that's it the sound of God's voice at the sound of your thunderous voice they hurried off as the mountains rose up and the valleys went down to the place you appointed for them you set up a boundary for them they could not cross so that they would not cover the earth again you turn springs into streams they flow between the mountains they provide water for all the animals in the field while donkeys quench their thirst the birds of the sky live beside them they chirp among the bushes he waters the mountains from the upper rooms of his palace the earth is full of the fruit you cause to grow and crops for people to cultivate so they can produce food from the ground as well as wine that makes people glad and olive oil two of my favorite things wine and olive oil right you can go tasting for both as well as bread that sustains them the trees of the, of the Lord receive all the rain they need the cedars of Lebanon that he planted all right so we're moving on after this to you know what animal life does with these things but here's the focus on in Psalm 104 on the things that God created the vegetation and the purpose that it ends up serving so I love that connection there in this psalm all righty um, number four we've uh, water water everywhere what is going on with the waters up to this point in Genesis so up to this point in Genesis we have a separation we have the expanse and the sky above and the and the sky below or the waters below but this time it says the waters are gathered into one place so up until now they've just been kind of nebulously separated and now they're gathered um, into the, into this one place so um well how do you picture the change in the waters describe or draw what you imagine so I I, I imagine this gathering of well I picture it as a globe and I see the land formations and then the waters in between and the land formation and the waters in between and um, I'd love to hear how you see them and maybe uh, share a drawing or write your words or drop them in the comments down below here how do you picture the change in the waters oh I just said that <laughs> on this day God is God making or organizing what he made is he making or is he organizing well he's already spoken into existence and I see him now as organizing what he already has made organizing what he's already made and then he says let the land which was already there produce make it let it do what it was designed to do let it produce vegetation and so he's organizing it so it can do what it was intended to do and uh, it takes on it does what it's supposed to do God had already created the land and now it produces land with the seeds after their own kind actually that might be a good one to note above of a repeated phrase after its own kind but you only know that I lay until you read the next part so we'll hold off on that all right um well what does God name in this passage um he says the 
and you can see it in quotes there, the land and the gathered waters he called seas and the ground he called land. So he names land and he names seeds, uh, seas. And, um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, he, he decides what the land is going to produce in terms of vegetation, but he gives names to things, land and seas. What is God's evaluation of the dry land and the gathered water? So he says, let the dry, uh, the land produce vegetation and the trees bearing fruit. God saw that it was, I highlight that there. It was good. All right. And number nine. Uh, what does land produce? Well, land produces vegetation. And again, I want us to see that this is the design for land. Land was created, land was organized, and land came, land produced what it was intended to do. God made it, spoke it all, and then the land just produced what it was, what was, uh, what it was needed and what was intended to do. So number 10, according to their kinds, highlight this phrase in your Bible and note exactly what happens according to its kind. So here we go. Um, plants yielding fruit, uh, seeds according to their kinds. I'll highlight that. And then over here with seed in it, according to their kinds. And it was so, and it was so. There's a repeated phrase. I need to add that, I guess, um, to the other. And then according to their kinds get that a in there as well <laughs> all right so all the according to its kinds we have um, fruit with seed in it land producing uh, yielding seeds plants with seeds and trees bearing fruit with seed according to their kind i love that reminder that when god creates something he creates it with a purpose to do what it was intended to do all right Number 11, vegetation producing fruit according to its kind is an elementary and basic principle of order. Jesus pointed out this law of nature. What was his warning? Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7. And you might be familiar with this account in the gospel of Matthew. He says, watch out for false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are voracious wolves. You will recognize them by their fruit. Grapes are not gathered from thorns or figs from thistles, are they? He always going back to according to its kind, back to Genesis and saying, look, this is the order of things. And when it's true, it produces what it's supposed to produce. Thorns, bushes produce thorns, figs produce figs, um, thistles produce thistles. In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. God is uh, Jesus is reminding us back all the way to Genesis. This is the intended order of things. Uh, what's good here produces something good uh, for all to see, right? And uh, so false prophets, they're in sheep's clothing, but they're still inwardly false. And so he's, again, alluding all the way back to Genesis with a common sense. Like this is obviously how things actually are. All right. All righty. So first this, then that. What evidence or of orderliness do you see in God's plan of creation in verses 9 and 12? Let's got to scroll back up there to 9 and 12. In verse 9, we, we read, God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let the dry ground appear. And then in um, verse uh, what are we? Verse 12, the land produced vegetation, plants yielding seeds and trees bearing with fruit according to their kinds. God saw that it was good. So God speaks it and things happen in an orderly fashion and the land produces or, or the land is created first and then we get the seeds that come out of it. It didn't all, you know, just all of it come out. We have land and then in an orderly fashion, logically really, what comes out of that? Well, plants doing what they're supposed to do come out of that, right? All right. So looking at back at Genesis um, 1, 2 through 13, what locations has God provided for his creation? I'll go ahead and call up that passage. All right. So in Genesis 1, verse 2, uh, we have an empty and formless uh, tohu, vavohu, uh, void. And from there, uh, the spirit of the God is moving over the surface of the water. God says, let there be light. And so he creates that and he saw the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. So we have this space created for something to eventually happen. Then he says, um, 
uh, after the first day, let's make an expanse in the midst of the waters. Let it separate water from water. And we have the sky and we have the um, earth below. And then he says, um, let the waters under the sky be gathered to one place. Let the dry ground appear. So we've got the dry ground land and the waters he called sea. So God's creating space, place, location for his creation to continue to happen. It needs a place to exist, right? So we see that space and that dividing up that God's doing here in this op- on these opening first three days, okay? All right, so doubly good. Uh, only two days, uh, on day two, um, God did not say it was good. Did you notice that? <laughs> you go back to day two. Uh, on day three, today's reading, what do you notice in contrast? So let's take a look at what we've read in day, let me get that back up here at the top. Well, I can go to day two. Um, we have on um, evening and morning, the second day, and we don't have anything about it. It was good. We just have the reality of that day. There was no speaking God, no none of God saying, and it was good as a result of that particular day. But here we are on the third day, and he says, it was good in verse uh, 10. I'll change that to pink if I can. Will it let me? Yeah, it did. And God saw that it was good. And then again in verse 12, God saw it was good. So we get a doubly good on uh, on day three and no nothing that was declared good on day two. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later and speculate as to why. And we're going to get to that all the way, I think, at the end of this of this lesson. Not today, but another day in this lesson. All right. So make note of that. God says day two silent on whether or not it's good no evaluation from god and then day three two goods we get two goods on that day all right and then wrapping up here thinking biblically consider what god created and what he could have created how does the diversity of vegetation reveal the goodness of god what a what a simple thing to consider and i want us to do that kind of thing just like notice like oh yeah it didn't have to be that way but notice the fact that god didn't have to give us plants he created a world and ordered it in such a way that everything's moving toward the creation of the apex of his creation, which is going to be humans. And he's providing the things that make life fun and interesting and tasty and beneficial for all of us. And he did not have to do it that way. So we get vegetation. Uh, that's your broccoli and your Brussels sprouts, but it's also your trees and uh, what you might consider weeds, which is really just a plant that's growing in a spot that you don't want it to grow all right so everything that god created is good and everything is for our blessing and our benefit and for all of us to turn back to god and say thank you for thinking of me thank you for considering uh what i would need right and when i'm saying i i mean all of humankind like he is preparing a place for us the 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 highest point of his creation And, and that should lead us with very grateful hearts all right Well, that wraps up our lesson time together today. Don't forget to spend a a little time reviewing your memory verse and see how you're doing on that. And I look forward to being back here with you in our next lesson. Uh, If you haven't already left a comment, do that right now. And also remember before you go that you are loved and prayed for. And I do look forward to being back here again with you real soon. Bye-bye for now.